Hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, we would like to welcome you here. Um, if you're watching this video, probably you are interested or curious about engagement as a topic. That is a good start. And we hope you will enjoy your stay here for the next 40 minutes around. My name is Sandro, and I'm the owner of Widi Consulting Research and Selection, a company operating in Poland since the 2006. And today, uh, with me and with us, uh, we have Mikhail Lubowski, uh, which whom we established recently a partnership to start a new page in Widi Consulting history, expanding uh, our core executive search business on broader people and organization consultancy scope. Uh, Mikhail, uh, could you say a few words about yourself? Sure, Sandro. Thanks. Uh, good morning, everyone. As Sandro said, my name is Mikhail Lubowski. I'm Russian by origin, but uh, live in Poland for over six, uh, six years. Uh, I've been almost all my career in HR in uh, different uh, companies, uh, mainly big corporations. And over the past uh, 10 years, I I think I, I um, held more, mainly the positions of regional HR head uh, for geographies of sub uh, region in Europe or full Europe or even Europe, Middle East and Africa. Uh, my latest uh, corporate assignment was the chart director for industrial operations in Electrolux company for Europe, Middle East and Africa. And that uh, defines my interest, uh, or let's say it, it follows my interest in, in manufacturing environments, even though big piece of my career was also connected with sales and service uh, commercial organizations. Um, last few years, I'm very deeply uh, discovering, starting the topics of engagement, performance, leadership, organizational culture. And uh, around the end of last year, uh, when the pandemic was like in the very full speed, I recognized that uh, I want to engage myself. I want to, to dedicate myself to change the business to, um, to, let's say, help companies to unlock the potential of humans inside, to transform them into the highly engaging environments, to let them uh, thrive with their people and deliver uh, the value for the business itself, for the shareholders, for the society, for people working in there. So that uh, crossed my roads with Sandro and Guidi Consulting. And uh, we just found the similarity of our, let's say, passion and interest and decided to, to try to expand the uh, the original business of executive search towards the the general let's say support to the companies in the area of people. Cool. Thank you, Mikhail. So let let me start to straight to the point. Um, the topic of engagement has been discussed uh, over a long time, and there are a lot of studies uh, measuring overall engagement levels. Uh, employees globally. Um, for example, one is well known is the Gallup study that is continuously assessing engagement level across the globe. Uh, can you give us, uh, uh, Mikhail, just your personal view about engagement and why uh, is the topic so important? Yeah, I think I have quite many stories in my life, uh, including my own story of, uh, you know, rallying from high engagement to the low engagement and to the high engagement back. But I think this personal story is better to be shared in, in different environments. Uh, instead, I would, I would try to share a couple of the business related stories. Uh, and I would start with the one uh, which happened uh, quite long ago in the middle of my career. I've been working in a commercial organization um, with uh, Asian roots. Let's say this is an Asian company, but very well known and uh, very well, let's say, performing. Uh, and the organization in Russia, I was um, uh, Russia and the surrounding countries I was looking after uh, was fairly well performing, I mean, as, itself, uh, but uh, due to the different instabilities inside, it was really generating quite a lot of cost of managing those, uh, those difficulties because the turnover of personnel was uh, roughly 25% across the year. And you can imagine the, the team changing fully in terms of numbers uh, over a few years is a, is a big trauma for, for the organization, right? So you, you need to continuously educate people. You need to um, put them into the job. You need to sacrifice uh, overall performance because there are, there are continuously changing people. And the main driver for that was uh, basically the way uh, expatriate management treated the local organization. So it was like uh, common to have... Uh, one day the high performing person coming to work meeting uh, an expatriate in a bad mood let's say 
and becoming, let's say, the, an enemy of this, <laughs> this person. And you cannot uh, uh, really deliver much in that, uh, in that reality, in these uh, conditions, because you don't know what future, what tomorrow brings to you. You wait until this, uh, let's say, clash happens, uh, which is not a high performing organization mode, right? Yeah, um, yeah I, I, I see that this is a, a typical situation. It's nothing new that it's uh, happening, and not only in the large organization, as you mentioned, uh, where the, the employees are treated by leaders and not, uh, uh, is not very much compensated by high level of pay. So, um, what have you made or what your team made to change such a situation? Yeah, I think uh, I didn't mention that in that company we really paid above the markets, but they didn't help. Yeah, so it what's what changed? There were two pro, two things uh, principally changing in those organization, and thanks to to some intention of the company, uh, the good thing they started to empower the local management, uh, putting uh, expatriates with their ideas, with their let's say Asian mentality, a little bit into the advisory role. And this also gave uh, a lot of uh, connection to, to employees with their leadership. But on the other hand, the high pay, which was historically, let's say, uh, fostered by the organization was converted into the much more transparent and clear system, which recognized uh, the performance, which was connecting the performance to the pay level. And people understood, I deliver this and, and I get this. And the element of the emotional, let's say, state of today of, of a single person was more or less uh, put to the, to the zero level. So. We managed to lower down the, uh, the turnover, the employee turnover, more or less to the 5% level, which is healthy for organization. Yeah, people stopped leaving because of these uh, collisions with, uh, with um, uh, expatriates, uh, and they, they performed much better. So out of the average performing organization, good but average performing across the globe, this unit uh, hit the best place in the ranking, internal corporate ranking for a few years in a row. So you see that, uh, that changing a small thing, relation between people and their, uh, their leaders makes uh, the overall result really booming. I mean, really booming. Yeah, that is an amazing uh, results uh, with almost uh, no cost. But uh, you mentioned about the two stories. So can you share with us the second one? Yeah, the second one is not commercial, it's more, let's say, industrial related, and it happened uh, recently, fairly recently. Um, and it was, it was a transformation inside another very well respected company, but uh, the company didn't respect the quality matter enough historically, and uh, that generated quite some issues uh, from the customer, uh, let's say, satisfaction levels down to the big penalties that it had to pay for defective products. And there was a moment when companies say, we, we need to change the central quality approach. I mean, for overall organization. And that was like giving a big impulse to, uh, to the full company to recognize that the quality matter is a matter of everyone. There was a very strong vision shared. Uh, there was a very uh, strong direction given to people saying, you know, we've been doing it wrong for, for a long period in time. Uh, yeah, we, we, do not, we do not, well, we question it, but we do not focus on the past. We we'll focus on the future. We want to become the uh, best in class, let's say, top of mind, the consumer experience uh, driven quality, uh, let's say, champions. And uh, here is your call. You, 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 you can do what you think is good to do. Uh, we need to be the best. And uh, that empowered people so much with the great vision, with the, with the, uh, with the freedom to, you know, go around and then try new things, uh, automate, digitize, uh, you know, focus on different things, forget about the effectiveness uh, to some extent and for, put more into the front, the, the consumer preferences. And yeah, after first year, I think uh, we already started to see tremendous improvements, uh, um, you know, improving so much uh, versus the past. Every uh, next year was just beating the record the uh, service call rates were decreasing, the, the uh, defectiveness was dramatically dropping, the consumer preferences were dramatically raising. And we, after a few years, like two years, we already started to beat our main competitors, which was before at all not uh, beyond the imagination. I mean, it was not expected at all. So we were struggling to be not falling out of the market from the consumer preference perspective in the past. 
and now we were uh, beating our competitors. So that is also a good example that empowering people, letting them do, changes the business performance significantly, really significantly. Mm -hmm. It's a very important point. So I would like now to touch another important point because uh, this is what you said is mostly related with the operational part, but uh, there is always uh, a critical point that is uh, talking about engagement with the leaders, with the CEO, with owners of the company. It's pretty hard. Why, in your opinion, is so hard? Good question, Sandra. Thanks a lot. Yeah, you know, uh, engagement. Being an HR uh, person, I hear the engagement term virtually on every corner. So everyone is speaking about uh, in need of engagement and the effort engagement uh, needs to be to take. Uh, and definitely engagement is uh, a topic on agenda of every company, uh, regular surveys, you know, action points and so on. But I do recognize what you're saying and definitely for top leaders, it's difficult to speak about engagement. Uh, many times they see it, okay, is, it, is an HR matter. So is it, is it, is a thing about uh, this function. But in fact, uh, I think there are two things which uh, probably drive that uh, that is, uh, let's say, a cool uh, attitude, uh, let's say, cold attitude to the topic of engagement. One thing is is highly intangible. So you cannot see engagement uh, visible on the profit and loss, which is the main concern of the top leader, right? So they are they are securing the profitability, the health of the business, and you cannot see where engagement is placed there. So you don't have a specific line in the profit and loss statement. But the numerous uh, surveys and the studies uh, globally, and the one which you mentioned, the Gallup study, shows that, in fact, the engagement is visible and is affecting basically every line of income and cost. So you can see it virtually everywhere. And here is the illustration. Uh, we, can, we can see the results of this Gallup study, which was done a little bit uh, longer ago, but, uh, but you know, it's valid until now because they continue to survey um, uh, the same companies across the globe. And we see that, uh, that you see that virtually every aspect is touched. You, you see it uh, in, the, uh, in the income, in the sales, you see it uh, in, the, in the quality levels, in the consumer um, preferences, the innovation and productivity grows when you have the engaged, engaged teams. There are fewer losses uh, from people absent. You, there are fewer, uh, fewer, let's say, misses of, of delivery uh, and so on and so on. So you have really every aspect touched. And uh, let's imagine if we just uh, think about that picture and try to calculate uh, driving a business on the level of 20% bigger sales with 20% bigger profitability altogether give us, uh, gives us 44% of the better profits. We are comparing to the same state of the same company uh, with less engaged people. And I mean, it's not bad result. The 44% of better profit, I think is a, is a dream of dreams uh, for, many, for many businesses, right? Yeah, absolutely, you are right. Assuming that it's a run a business of 10% of profitability, receiving an incremental of 14.5% is a really huge step. But um, it's, it's clear that engagement is embedded to a company, what this company is doing, and is very much important. But uh, uh, there are so many talk around the engagement, and many companies are taking effort to shift it up why is it still there is no ultimate effort? Yeah, it's not a very good question. Um, I've seen it in the, by every company. I mean, every company I used to work with uh, is dealing with engagement, right? So regular surveys, as I said. Uh, uh, I think uh, many companies have a stereotype that um, that uh, engagement, driving engagement up is fairly costly. So it's only affordable for big companies. But you know, having worked in big companies, um, I can say none of them is, uh, is doing greatest job ever. Yeah, so none of the company can be calling themselves the top engaged uh, teams and we have uh, problems here and there everywhere. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, uh, also smaller businesses need to recognize that uh, big business is all about money. So they count every single euro cost, yeah. Uh, and with the big amounts of people, I've been responsible for 15,000 people 
um, organization in Electrolux. And you can imagine how big is the, is the budget of, of personnel. Adding up every single 0.1% of the cost is a big amount of money. And definitely big companies don't want to spend this money. Uh, so, I mean, speaking about those stereotypes that engagement can be reached only in big companies is being broken by, by the concept that they are saving money first of all, and uh, yeah, not, is, is not what comes uh, easiest. Uh, and then on the other hand, uh, the strongest, um, uh, the strongest, uh, let's say, effect is not coming from money. You remember the story um, of, of those Asian company paying above the market, didn't put engagement super high. They had also very moder moderate uh, ratios of, of engagement index, I do remember it was really in the very middle of, of normal, let's say, curve. So it was nothing, nothing incredible. So uh, I think comparing to, to this uh, thing, we can also look at other activities in life like hobbies or charities where people don't receive money, but dedicate themselves so much uh, of their life, of their heart, of their soul. And definitely there are other drivers uh, rather than money, which we refer to. So it, it shouldn't cost so much, uh, in fact. I, I totally agree with you. And uh, we we have a lot of example also in executive search and recruiting, uh, where um, people can be engaged in a project and not strictly directly uh, about the compensation package, but rather about the value culture and so on. So you clearly mentioned that the monetary drivers are not the powerful uh, long lasting effort, uh, but from your experience, uh, which are the critical elements of the engagement? Yeah, thanks for asking. I've prepared, uh, I've prepared one, one small slide and we'll, we'll show it in a moment. Uh, yeah, I've been definitely looking it, uh, at it and I've been also studying a topic and I see that uh, also various studies show that uh, money is not the only driver or even not a, not a driver in some cases. And there are, um, there are other elements uh, which come along with my practice and which I also find in, the, in those surveys uh, and also recognize in my own example, which are really driving the, uh, the engagement levels. Uh, so let's look on this, on this slide. Uh, I start with a clarity of company vision, direction, aspirations, the goals and strategies. Uh, this vision is a North Star which leads you towards the bright future, right? So people who are owning, not only knowing, but owning that, uh, that direction, who really associate themselves to, to those, uh, those big um, aspirations, well, they will be trying to do their best to, to get there. And the best case would be that, uh, that this is uh, somehow co-created with people. You involve them into defining that, that bright future, verifying continuously, right? The second thing, uh, besides just knowing and seeing that North Star, you need to understand, uh, each individual needs to understand how their contribution really puts um, something into this uh, delivery of the, of the big vision. They need to have very clear understanding how their job is connected to the final results. Without this connection, uh, they will be just seeing their small scope and uh, not really trying to do it better, uh, not connecting it to the, to the longer term, uh, right? So also not thinking about continuous improvement and, uh, and um, yeah, overall better comp contribution to, to the bigger results. Next one, I think uh, very well um, met more or less everywhere, also in HR, we believe that fair performance recognition and pay for performance are strong drivers for, for performance and engagement. People who really associate that, uh, uh, I think recognition makes here even bigger, bigger piece. Uh, well, we come back a little bit for pay for performance, but it's not the level of pay uh, as per se, yeah, it's, it's, it's that you understand, you, you do good job, you receive the appreciation, you receive the recognition, you receive a good word from your manager, from your colleagues, and it drives you forward. So it really puts your energy in. Uh, and if it's also connected to the, to the fair pay of for performance, it's also stimulating you even deliver more and more, yeah? It needs to be managed smartly, uh, not to be, let's say, uh, abused, but, uh, but uh, I think it's, it's also a very important point. The next thing is, is, is also resided with the psychology of people. Uh, we, we love to learn, we love to develop. Yes, yeah, so 
if we see the perspective of growing in terms of professionalism, uh, learning opportunities, growing opportunities, this uh, drives also forward. So it moves you forward. Uh, there is a very famous saying, what got us here would not get us forward. Uh, we, we need to adopt, we need to change ourselves, learn new things. And this brings uh, really excitement to what you're doing, uh, especially for younger generation is, is a super important factor, yeah, ability to learn. Uh, the next thing is difficult uh, in terms of uh, traditional environments is, uh, in my view, giving a lot of uh, stimulus uh, when you have freedoms to decide, experiment, and fail. In, in the very highly controlled uh, organizations, in the highly controlled environment, giving freedom to people, empowering people is not is, is well said, but very, very, very bad done. Yeah, so it's, um, it's very difficult to implement, but if you manage to do it, it allows to really spread the feeling of accountability, ownership, responsibility, entrepreneurial spirit, um, yeah, people start to self-manage if you give them the power to do it. Um, yeah, but but it's not an easy thing to do, as I said. Um, few companies. Um, uh, definitely, um, I, I agree, and um, also thinking about what we have in common. Uh, we both have in our families as small kids, and um, what you just said is a remind me. Um, a situation, a real situation that uh, we are living uh, uh, in in our family, we, we we had in the past, and probably other continues to have in the future. Um, when a kid is uh, learning how to walk, uh, we never blame uh, kids for being unable uh, to walk uh, in the beginning by themselves. Uh, on the opposite, we encourage uh, to make new attempts. We help when they are failing. Uh, we secure them and we care until they will uh, they will reach the final goal of walking uh, alone. Yeah. Mm. Yes, you are right. You are right. I think uh, we can find the parallels between the working environment and life environments, life experiences fairly well. And you describe this situation. Good. Yeah. Learning is. Uh, is starting from the very young age and <laughs> it continues the full life. Um, let's finish the list. So there are a couple of more remaining. Uh, another thing which is uh, super, uh, super important and I think is also very well discussed uh, now is a psychological safety and atmosphere inside the organization, inside the collective. Uh, it's a very important factor because you need to come to work feeling, feeling safe at work. You, you, need, to, you need to be feeling Every employee wants to be feeling that uh, they can do things, so they can share their opinion, they can try, they can test, they can uh, they can fail maybe sometimes, uh, but they are never being blamed, they are being punished, they are being respected. Uh, so, well, then then it will stimulate raising new ideas, uh, improving continuously, sharing opinions, and then the real truth will, will emerge through that organization with the right atmosphere inside. Yeah, it's also related to the relation. Or it's it's related to interfaces between people and their managers and between people as well. So if it's safe to be inside, it's really good. It's very healthy. And last but not least, I think is a more synthetic um, coming out of all the previous trust and respect among all the players and uh, leaders back and forth. I mean, this human relations, uh, pure human relations is the ground base for, for everything which happens between people. And uh, it should not be different in the working environment. Uh, the factor that we are earning money for ourselves and for the company should not make uh, any change in the human relations. We're all humans in the family, right? Yeah, yeah, totally, totally agree with you and uh, with this, this vision. Um, I would like to touch now a topic that uh, everybody are speaking about is a kind of uh, buzzword. The world is changing. Uh, there is uh, something uh, that's never happened before. So um, could you just help us to navigate a little bit more the challenge that the leaders are dealing in uh, um, with engagement in nowadays uh, organization, laying out in a, in a world that is completely transformed and disruptive? Yeah. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks for this question. I think uh, I can identify around four main drivers of that uh, difficult time which we are experiencing today. 
Uh, here in Europe and specifically in Poland as well, uh, we first of all see that market turned back to employee market. So it's not anymore uh, an employer who is expecting crowds to stand and wait until advertisement of a job will be posted is on the contrary, every employer is fighting for even a pair of hands. I've been working with industrial environment, even blue collar, uh, reasonable blue collar with hands and, uh, and heads is a deficit. So really is is an employee market. So we can be really attracting people like hell. I mean, with many things uh, to feed their expectations because they are choosing, simply choosing. The second thing I think is a generational shift. Uh, so, um, well, seeing that still the majority of, uh, of employees are Generation X, I mean, born before, I think, let's say 80s, uh, there, are, there are millennials coming really quite actively at work uh, at the moment. And there are so many speeches, there are so many discussions around how millennials are different from previous generations. But even more, there are, there are Generation Z coming in. So these younger people, 20 something years old and the, uh, the generation next one <laughs> or generation one, why I think uh, this younger ones and the generation Z uh, is the kids which are today in five to 10 years, they will come to, to work again. Then we have a compressed uh, situation of so many generations at one work with so many different drivers. So each generation has completely different drivers. Uh, of their motivation and engagement. And for the younger ones, the more uh, the reputation of a company, the social responsibility, the, uh, the environment, the rights to be uh, self-expressed, uh, to, to the development focus, it becomes really the main driver. While Generation X was happy to deliver just for a stable job, uh, which was like a lifetime employment, right? So um, coping with all this complexity at work will really make a, a difficulty for managers because they need to keep in mind all these differences and approach different uh, generations, different people with different uh, motivators or so different uh, stimulus, right? The next one uh, is the world itself today. I mean, the VUCA, this abbreviation of VUCA, introducing all these volatilities, uncertainties, um, ambiguities, and um, see, I always forget. Um, yeah, this is a difficult world. The COVID showed us how difficult this VUCA is. You have surprises and, and, at every corner. You have, uh, you have um, completely different reality, which is changing continuously. And uh, uh, transparency, trust, and respect becomes really a crucial point when you face this environment, which is not helping you. Yeah, Today's environment, business, social, economical, market, and so on, is very difficult. So inside should be really super safe, super transparent and then respectful, trustful. And in the final end, I think uh, the, the last disruptor is the digitization. We see that uh, thanks to COVID again, uh, working from everywhere is becoming quite a, quite a topic. Keeping people connected and engaged in a physical, let's say disconnection is not an easy thing. Yeah, we, we know that in the office is much better, is, 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 is easier because we can get uh, physically close to each other. Disconnected by virtual reality is not as easy. Then there are uh, digitization uh, elements which are coming to, let's say, um, to the content of jobs. And some of the jobs are being replaced by robots, by digital robots. And here we are with frustrated people who see that future robots are coming like a, like, <laughs> like, like a science movie. Um, so you need to still focus on on engaging, engaging those people into the things they are doing uh, where we have humans on places and we will need to have these humans on places, but we'll need to refocus them, give them new skills, new capabilities, new, new beliefs and a new vision for the future, right? So uh, these are all factors which are making this story not, not easy. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, thank you, Mikhail. Well, uh, just to summarizing a bit, um, uh, we were discussing about the challenge, uh, the opportunities, the main factors related with engagement. But uh, um, you are also a coach and uh, a consultant, a part of HR expert since long. 
So uh, everybody would like uh, to listen your secret receipt if there is any or some piece of advice for those companies who are interested to shape their culture and focus on engagement, people engagement. Could you, could you pass some uh, advice or some receipt? I will try to. Um, as we discovered earlier, I mean, in most of cases, engagement cannot be ultimately increased uh, uh, with only money, right? So money help, normally money help, but for a short term, and in some instances. Um, so main drivers can be affected without huge monetary investments is a good news. But the, the point is that uh, um, if we run a change, if we run a transformation, which we, which we intend to, uh, let's say, affect the engagement in the end, we need to have the leadership and culture changed. And this is a process which is not easy, right? So many companies also take endeavors and. Uh, end up nowhere. So more or less uh, coming back to the, to the previous models. But there are definitely some things which can be done very easy and very fast. Uh, well, everything starts from hearing from your people, right? Uh, if you start listing your employees in, in a, any form, in the form of regular feedback uh, from those people, um, how they see the culture of the company, how they see uh, the, uh, the elements of, uh, of engagement drivers, it gives you the food for thought, right? So um, even, even more specifically, you can try to start uh, maybe not from the big surveys, but from just asking people who are leaving the organization, what makes you leave the organization? What would you change if there was a chance to change whatever uh, in the form of suggestion? Um, if you just ask, uh, well, give me a reason for your leave, you will get a standard answer. I found a get better job. But if you go deeper, it's more specific, what would you change? If there is one thing which you can change about environment manager, your colleagues, uh, whatever your job, they will start opening up and they will definitely go uh, with details, which you can also take for yourself and uh, understand what is it uh, about to be changed. I'm sure I've seen it many times in my life that if you establish this dialogue, uh, the trust, the mutual trust starts to go up. Uh, even you only start to speak with, with those people who leave, but it will also give the signal to the organization. If you supplement it with regular surveys of those who are working, and you, you really do with this feedback um, uh, analysis, uh, discussions, you engage people into planning the improvement uh, actions and truly do the improvement actions, you will start to observe that the main improvement area is how people are treated through leaders, is how the, um, the culture is designed and how it needs to be changed. And then if you have already more or less trusted relations starting to, started to be built, you recognize that um, it's, it's the leadership and culture to be changed. You offer people to, to move on that journey. Yeah, your leaders, your employees, and you start changing environment uh, small bits. Uh, definitely it's, it's not a super fast, it's not a super simple process. You cannot, uh, let's say from the day of Monday next week say, okay, we are a different company. We start to live across the different principles, values and so on. It's an incremental process. You take uh, one single thing, you, you, you value the most and people value the most, you change it. You give, the, uh, you give the example to people, you lead by example, you show that you can do different things. And uh, yeah, it's good if, uh, according to my experience, if somebody is next to you, uh, a little bit with uh, not, um, not a subjective uh, point of view, You're somebody who is really neutral, a facilitator, a coach, a speaking partner, uh, who can take this external perspective, give you questions, uh, question probably approaches and, uh, and principles, or just from the curiosity, drive you through, uh, through a little bit of, uh, you know, different view thinking. Um, yeah, you can do it yourself as well. Um, it's possible, but then you require a lot of time. Uh, and I mean, you require a lot of dedication. Uh, in any case, dedication of the top leaders uh, is super essential and participation and showing to their people we are changing. Yeah, that will create the, the engagement into the change as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you a lot, uh, Mikhail. I see here in the, the last part of your speech, uh, uh, there are some pieces of advices and uh, maybe not the secret receipt, 
uh, but uh, some starting point. Um, it was definitely um, worth to have a such discussion, uh, exploring engagement with the real examples and understanding that the power of uh, real engagement the strategies uh, can bring, what it can bring inside of the company and uh, to their people. So uh, myself, uh, Mikhail, and uh, all with the consulting uh, team members will remain at your disposal in case uh, you would like to assess the level of your HR health. Um, we do uh, propose you a 30 minutes online free of charge consultation, if you like to do that. So we will be more than happy to discuss with you, waiting for you online. Bye, cheers. Thank you, bye.